Hey everyone, um, I'm back with uh, Justin and uh, ZK Maven, expert interviewer Anna Rose. Um, and we just wanted to talk to you, Justin, about kind of the other things that you're working on in ZK with the EF and sort of any exciting projects that, uh, that you might have. Right, so in ZK specifically, where ZK means zero knowledge, um, we are working on something called secret leader election. And you may have heard of SSLE, uh, where not only is it secret, but also you have a single leader at every, uh, at every round. And basically, the, the problem that we're trying to solve here is that right now on the Beacon Chain, you know, and everyone knows, um, what the next proposals will be. You know their cryptographic identity, the their, their, their pub key. Um, and if you observe the peer-to-peer -peer network, most likely, especially for home validators, you'll be able to assign an IP address mm -hmm. to that validator. And so what you can do as an attacker is mm -hmm. mount a denial of service attack. And this is bad because if we have, let's say, 50% of the validators running from home, uh, then basically an attacker can take down roughly 50% of the blocks uh, and that could be used and incentivized through, through MEV basically. Um, there could be attacks that uh, are actually rational to do. And then not only is that attacks for external people to come in, but there's actually incentives for validators to start DDoSing their other fellow, fellow validators. And the reason is, let's say, we have two blocks in a row, so two slots in a row. Um, I know I'm the second proposer. I have an incentive to go DDoS the proposer just before me. Mm. And the reason is that all the transactions that come in and all the juicy transaction fees will go to me mm -hmm. if I can DDoS and prevent the formation of a block just before me. Wow. And so, so this isn't really even theoretical. Like I, I think in Solana, this is sort of happening by accident, where uh, people are so desperate to get their transactions in that they're like going to the future proposers and just DDoSing them. Oh wow! Like the threat is real. Mm, right, right, right. Um, huh. I think I, I think I, I could be wrong on that. No, you're right. I guess it's it's DDoS for a separate reason. So in Solana, they have this optimization where. As a, as a user, from what I understand, you send your transaction directly to the next block proposer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of a, a, a DDoS vector. Mm. But in, in Ethereum, we actually have a, a mesh network in, for, for gossip. So you kind of, you send your transaction to all your peers, these peers send the transaction to all the other peers, and so it kind of more evenly spread out to build the mempool. So it's a different architecture. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, at what stage is the research? It's a fairly advanced, actually. Okay. Um, so the research, I would say, is is done, uh, if not, or you know, very, very close to being done. And now we're uh, we have proof of concepts, uh, which we're trying to bring to production, basically. Um, now maybe I should explain where the zero knowledge comes in. Right? Yes. Um, so what we have, the, the 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 primitive that we have is what we call a, a re-randomizable commitment. So basically, every validator has a commitment to their pub key, um, which they, they put on chain. And the beacon chain will basically keep track of these commitments in, in a list. And what we want to do is we want to re-randomize them in such a way that when a, a re-randomization happens, the validator can track their own commitment, but everyone else that's observing can't. Uh, it looks like a random shuffle to them. Um, and basically, uh, what we do is that we allow every proposer to perform such a randomization, but we need them to prove in zero knowledge that they've done a permutation, uh, meaning that they haven't kind of taken away commitments or inserted their own commitments. Um, and yeah, this is basically where the, where the zero knowledge comes in. And so we have a, a custom uh, proof system, which is kind of a, a variant of Bayer Groff, uh, which Mary Maller has, has, has designed. Uh, and it's basically the only uh, ZK kind of uh, primitive that we have uh, uh, on, on, on Ethereum layer one, uh, except if you consider signatures to be ZK mm -hmm. in the sense that they, 
don't leak the private key. Would you would you call this like zk in consensus? Is it like or what at what part of the stack would you call this? Yeah, so it's using zero knowledge proofs as uh, a tool for one of the building blocks, one of the modules. So the way that I think about the layer one is that you have multiple modules. You have the randomness module, mm. you have the secret leader election module, um, you might have the registry module, uh, you might have the finality gadget and all of these other modules. Um, and from the point of view of an application developer or from the point of view of a user, you don't get to see all these modules. They're mm. kind of abstracted away and packaged to you through the properties of the EVM. Cool. Very cool. What, at what point does that actually get implemented? Like, at what would it come with the merge, or is that are we thinking it's like way going to come way later? Great question. So, for the merge, we have a strategy of a minimal merge, meaning that we do the merge and nothing else. Okay. Um, if the attack that I described, the denial of service attack, happens, um, then that could be an incentive for us to accelerate the deployment um, of secret leader election. Um, so we kind of have this in our back pocket if we do see the attacks. Uh, if not, then I guess you know there might be m higher priority things. For example, deploying uh, what's now called dank sharding, or the first step being proto dank sharding. Um, but I, I am a little bit worried because this denial of a service attack vector is probably the lowest hanging fruit mm. for an attacker with just a few thousand dollars and some uh, investment from a development uh, time perspective, they can relatively easily um, harm, harm the, the, the Ethereum chain. Can you say the name of the, the ZK thing again, just for our listeners? Yeah, sure. So it's, you have various um, proof systems, right? We have Plonk, we have Graph16, and here it's kind of a, one of the earlier ones called Bayer Groff. Is this before Groff 16? Yes, I think it's before Groff 16. Okay. And the reason why we can use kind of one of the, the older proof systems is because the, the statement that we're proving is very structured. Is this proving that you've done a permutation properly? And so instead of having a general purpose snark proving scheme where for arbitrary circuits or arbitrary um, NP statements, we're only proving this very structured statement. Would you need a trusted setup for this somehow? Great question. Um, yeah. the, the answer is no. Okay. Um, so you can basically use a bulletproof style commitment, the, the same oh, wow. commitments as uh, with Nova. Cool. Nice. Um, very cool. So I guess if people want to find out about this, where can they read up on this type of stuff? Great. Um, so we have um, a full spec of secret leader election, which we call WISC, because you're whisk whisking <laughs> the, the set of validators. You don't um, want to use the term mix, I guess. Yeah, we have so many <laughs> I terms, feel like, like that's loaded somehow. So whisk is good. I haven't heard that. That's cool. Whisk is great. Um, so we have uh, George, who basically uh, came up with WISC, uh, and he wrote an ETH research post, mm -hmm. which has all the links to um, you know, the uh, paper by Bayer Groff, but also the modification by Mary Meller, um, as well as proof of concept implementations of WISC uh, in, in, in Rust. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So cool. yeah, thanks so much for sharing with us this kind of like update or something, something else to look for in the work you're doing with CK. Yeah, absolutely. It's an important incremental security upgrade for Ethereum. Uh, and if you look into the roadmap, actually, a lot of it is just incremental security upgrades. VDFs is one of them. Oh. Data availability sampling is one of them. Um, and yeah, there's, 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 a, there's, there's a few more um, out there as well. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, uh, ZK Maven, Anna Rose. <laughs> That's a new name every time. <laughs> um, thanks, cool. everyone, for watching. Cheers.